niece, a niece of my uncle, because he's on the quote unquote other side of the family. But Faith has passed. That murder is still unsolved, which was a UNC student, and there are still folks who are trying to figure out who killed her and things of that nature. And of course, she was a native background, so I know that Jana has actually done some work fighting, uh, trying to bring awareness to that, as have other performers. I believe that uh, Charlie, who actually, or Charlie Lowry, um, has actually done some songs about that. So it's definitely a topic that is definitely very deep and definitely very much needed to be heard about. Um, just really quickly, how do you um, mix the activism with the uh, art and things of that nature? Because I've got a lot of friends that are activists, and they are also artists, but sometimes they get uh, people that criticize them for being both activists and artists. I actually believe that the best activists are usually artists. Uh, I know there's a good friend of mine, yeah. Pierce Freelon, ran for a mayor here, and he's definitely an activist and an artist. Uh, he's a rapper, but uh, he definitely uh, falls into both of those categories. But i just wondering how you approach it and how the media has dealt with you and Taboo, because I know a lot of times folks try to downplay the activist part of what artists do. Yeah, I, I feel like it's it's needed in today's society. A lot of a lot of issues get overlooked, and music is a universal language. So it's like if we're going to use, you know, our creative for a positive way, it should be to bring awareness. I mean, but the, I think the number one thing that people have to realize and people have to keep in mind is that, when you're doing, when you're making music with activist standpoints, you're making music with a message. You kind of have to approach it in a way that's uh, a loving, positive way, and you have to approach it with a certain type of music that people can relate to, even if they can't relate to the what you're saying in the lyrics. They have to be able to feel the vibe of the of the sound of the music. So, you know, my father, he was really, really great at that. He was really great at my uncle. They were really great at getting messages across. But people loved the music so much that they didn't even, like most of the time, realize until they actually read the lyrics what they were saying. So it's it's just more of approaching your activism through music in a positive way as opposed to, you know, um, like hate speech or or singling out any specific person or any specific race or any specific um, thing like that. It's more of just trying to use your platform to bring awareness as opposed to singling anybody out. Because when you try to do that, people close their ears and people don't want to be a part of that because they're scared of how it may fall back on them. But if it's just a good song with a positive message, then everyone can get behind it, you know? So. Yeah, I believe that definitely. Um, and uh, what has it been like trying to uh, break into the mainstream music scene as a native performer? Because I imagine that you're probably – trying to just like uh, Taboo and Wu-Tang break into the uh, mainstream market, but a lot of times folks don't want to deal with that or they want to try to stereotype us and things of that nature. So I was just wondering how you're able to cope with it as you create your career and uh, how you're able to be proud of your Native heritage, but at the same time not uh, run away from it. Yeah, it's uh, it's an every it's an uphill battle. It's an everyday struggle. Um, you know, a lot of people try to box us in because of who we are and, they just think that we're supposed to be uh, doing the same thing, and um, I'm I'm kind of trying to change the the outlook on what a t- traditional and what a typical native artist is from everything from the way that I dress to the t- sound of my music to the topics I speak on. So, um, the, you know, mainstream media is kind of, um, in a way, they're opening their ears to it now more than they ever have uh, because with the power of social media, it's like. They have to. It's prevalent. Everything that we're going through and, the, and everything that, you know, the, that the minorities in every community are going through can't be hidden anymore. It can't be, it can't be overlooked because there's video to prove it or there's people who are now willing to stand up and aren't scared to let their voice be heard. So at the end of the day, it's just, it's, I mean, I would say that there's a lot of people who go against it, but then there's also a lot of people who are for it. So you, you know, you just have to, it just comes with the territory. There's going to be a lot of different people that don't understand it and feel threatened by it. But then there's also going to be a lot of people who are open for it. So it's just about, you know, taking it as you can because, you know, any great movement, any great message is going to have opposers. That's just how it goes, you know. So we, we've, we've accepted that. 
Yeah, and you're definitely right. You're, you're going to have folks that are going to try to fight you one way or the other, no matter what the message is. Now, when you talk to other Native performers that are trying to break into the business, what advice do you give them? Because, I mean, like I said, it's not that many Natives that are in their performance. So uh, what advice do you give the folks that might be trying to break into it that are of uh, Native heritage or even other cultures? Yeah, just uh, just stay true to yourself and just, you know, stay true to who you are. And uh, just try to change the game, man. Just, you know, I've always been told by my elders, you know, you know, you're native, so you don't have to do native music. Just do you. And whatever you do is going to be what you're meant to do. So at the end of the day, don't get boxed in with trying to, um, you know, do what you think is expected of you by the elders. Try to change the game. Try to change people's outlook on what they think a traditional native is. So there can be more of a path and more of an opportunity and a platform for people that aren't, you know, like because no one's the same, you know what I mean? So you just kind of have to be yourself and stay true to what makes you happy. So I would say that's the biggest, yeah, that's biggest advice I can yeah, that's a really good, solid advice, and I do think you're right that some people get too caught up in trying to incorporate uh, the stereotypes of what they think people want them to do and not really try to incorporate other sounds that they may be fans of. Because from what I've heard of you, exactly. you definitely incorporate a lot of the hip-hop and you incorporate some other sounds that you heard that were not necessarily the traditional uh, native drumming and some of the other things that you might have heard growing up, but that you wanted to incorporate some other sounds other than those that you grew up in, but you want to pay homage to those, but you also want to uh, have a wider market, so you incorporated some other sounds as well. Exactly. I mean, that's 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 the best advice you can give because it's really it's like people figure that they have to stick to a traditional sound or a traditional way of making native music, but really there's no trick like you know the everything is evolving, everything is changing on a day to day basis, so. As long as you're doing what makes you feel good, you'll, you'll never be boxed in and you'll always have a platform, you know? Yeah, because that's the thing that I think is too often folks get caught up in the stereotypes and they get boxed into something that doesn't let them grow in the way that they want to grow. So you're exactly. doing it the right way exactly. by definitely finding ways to incorporate things that you have a love for and not just things that are part of your culture but also in other things that you want to be proud of as well. So I think you're going about it the uh, right way and things of that nature. Now, what exactly, what other projects are you working on? You mentioned the song that you did that was a dedication to those women that are disappearing on a regular basis, but uh, do you have a new album coming out or do you have any other new projects that will be coming out in the uh, very near future? Yeah, actually, um, I have a song coming out at the beginning of the year titled Never Could Have Planned It, which is talking about the abolishment of Columbus Day here in Los Angeles. Because um, that's uh-huh. been taught to us since, you know, the beginning of time is that Columbus discovered America and that, you know, he was the savior of this of this country. But it's just all, that's really all bull, you know. So at the end of the day, um, this song that I, I'm, I'm about to release uh, at the top of the beginning of the year is really going to talk about how, you know, Columbus was not the not our savior and not you know the person that discovered us and you know switching that entire narrative because people have been taught that in school since day one so it's kind of something that we need to get rid of and uh, stop saying because it's just really not true and um, you know you guys can follow my Spotify uh, just look up PJ Vegas and you can check out all my new releases they'll be released on Spotify iTunes Apple Music all the major platforms. So, and, and folks forget the fact that uh, he was actually lost. He had no clue where he was going and was totally lost, and he came onto a country where there were already people here. So how can you discover something that already got folks here? So the, the narrative itself is just totally uh, warped in the first place because you can't discover something when folks are already here on the uh, in the area. And as we mentioned earlier, a lot of things that the mainstream society prides itself on were already parts of things that were going on in the native culture, whether it's the calendar, whether it's the clock, whether it's uh, spas, whether it's whatever, a lot of things that were the mainstream culture claims to be proud of is stuff that uh, we had yeah. already been discovered by nature. Might, might, I I add, might I add that back at that time, in that time period, they thought that Europe and Africa and Asia was all there was. They didn't know there was a whole other continent over here. So it has more to do with their limited 
you know, there was this limited knowledge, and then all of a sudden uh, the world opened up, and, you know, with their realization that there's this whole other continent, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like a real they eye opener. They, were gonna, <laughs> they all figured that they were going to fall off the end of the earth. They all thought the earth was flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's really interesting when you watch even some of the uh, – because I've talked about this on the show before, when you watch some of the even things that are popular now, I mean, definitely we've seen more improvement in terms of the imagery with the Wakanda movies and things of that nature. But before that, if you watch science fiction or even some of the other things that were out there, like the old Westerns and things of that nature, you would definitely think that the Native culture was totally uh, backwards and you would not understand the greatness that existed within the various Native cultures. Because that's the other thing that a lot of people forget is there were a variety of Native cultures. I mean, I believe there are like either eight or ten nationally recognized tribes here in North Carolina, and there are several others around the country. But people try to forget that part, that there are a multitude of tribes that exist even to this day. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, there were uh, something like 12 language groups um, across the, the what is now the United States had 12 language groups. Well, the whole of Europe only has two main language groups and then one side group. So there there was some serious diversity here. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And the first contact people were Taino people, which is now, uh, you know, in New York area, well, not in Puerto Rico area, actually, which are now being called Puerto Ricans. But the tribe that was first contact with Columbus were the, were the Taino people. And um, and what's crazy is in Puerto Rico, they have a, they have a Columbus statue of his ship, and Columbus has the size of, like, the, you know, uh, Statue of Liberty. So... We're in the process of now trying to coordinate ways of removing statues of Columbus all over the world because, like we said, he didn't discover us. You know, he was lost at sea. So, um, yeah, totally lost at sea. And it, sounds like y'all, it sounds like y'all are going through a lot of the stuff that's going on here with the Confederate statues where people are trying to, you know, if they're going to be put up anywhere, put up in a museum, but not sitting there right in your face and uh, insulting you by saying you're in the face exactly. on a regular basis. Exactly. I mean, that's what it's all about. We don't want to be praising them. We are. We don't want to have those people put on pedestals, or you know, because they are responsible for genocide. So it's uh, it's not right. Absolutely not right at all, and things of that nature. Uh, so, uh, CJ, I think we got just about another two minutes to go because I'm winding down on the show. But uh, what uh, this both to you and Alyssa, but what other thoughts would you like to leave the listeners with that are listening to the show, both about uh, Native heritage and just about your music in general, or just life in general? I don't know if you have any messages. I asked the ladies earlier if they had any messages for our leaders, uh, and for them, I asked about the state and the national leaders, and for you it could be the state that you're in and the national leaders, but I don't know if you have any parting thoughts that you want to share. Sure. Um, I'd like to just say to the people that um, thank you for, uh, you know, opening your ears to our narratives and to our subjects, to all, to all the non-Natives out there and to all the Native American allies. During November is Native American Heritage Month and, it, uh, month, and it's a time where we do a lot of reflecting and try to figure out ways that we can uplift our people and give recognition to the people who have also been lost uh, throughout the years. So um, just continue to, you know, follow, follow the narrative and follow what we're talking about and, uh, and do your own research. Don't take anyone else's word for it. I mean, you don't have to believe what we say. Just do your research and you'll see that it's, it's, it's fact. So um, with that being said, uh, thank you for having me on this show. Um, anyone that wants to follow me and pay attention to what I have to say and to my music, you can follow me on social media platforms at the real PJ Vegas. Um, I'm on iTunes, Spotify. Uh, just search up PJ Vegas and you'll find my stuff. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you, PJ. Um, uh, Alyssa, this is about a minute, but do you have any quick parting thoughts that you want to share? Yeah, I would just say... Um, during this time, Native American Heritage Month, um, it's a good chance to think about, you know, the environment and about how we really, as a society, we really need to build an economy based, based on the ecology, like the old Native way, because that, that philosophy, that, that's, I think that's where it's at. That's like the thing that, you know, can really transform us all is go back to that philosophy of how everything's related. And, you know, we, we're not, we're not separate from the environment. We can't live without the environment being healthy. So 
Uh, that's what I want to put in my yeah. art. That's the, kind of the number one thing that I I want to infuse into my art. Come going forward. Well, I definitely appreciate. You. Yeah. yeah. Definitely appreciate you, and I definitely hope to have you back on the show. Thank you for listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. We're on every Monday night at 7.